What's up everybody, my name is Odie. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Project Diablo 2's in-game. Uh, I get a lot of questions in my Twitch stream about what do I do when I hit level 85? What do I do when I hit level 75? What do I do when I hit hell? Um, and a lot of this stuff does carry over from regular Diablo 2 if you play Lord of Destruction or any of those things. Um, but the, the very, very late game is where a lot of things will change up and how you gear and things like that. Um, so this video is basically for for those people uh, if you have questions about the end game um hopefully we'll cover it in today's kind of quick little video this is supposed to be like a jump start there's going to be a bunch of links in the description down below to help you kind of find your way around um learn more and give you all the resources you need so today the topics we're going to cover are uh the, yeah, the first thing is uh project diablo 2 resources like i just mentioned next thing is crafting gear uh types of crafting how to craft all that good stuff after that it's trading um what's valuable what's not valuable you know kind of what to be on the lookout for while you while you're farming and gearing up yourself or just trying to get gear for yourself uh after that we'll be looking at farming spots so level 85 zones um you know, we'll do like the pit, uh, chaos sanctuary, all that good stuff. I'll, I'll be getting more into that. After that, we'll talk about maps because maps are another farming spot, but they kind of deserve their own section because they're kind of important. And then last but not least, we will talk about Ubers and uh, D clone, also known as Uber Diablo. Um, and that's going to be kind of the rundown of what we're going to be doing and discussing today. Uh, I do have my game pulled up, as you can see. Um, so hopefully I can walk around and show you guys some some easy things too. Uh, so first things first, let's talk about the Diablo 2 resources. The big one is the uh, Project Diablo 2 wiki. Uh, this is where you're gonna have all of your all your basic information, everything like that, um, from items to crafting to recipes. Very useful. There is a link in the description below. Um, second, your next biggest resource is gonna be uh, Project. Dis Project Diablo 2's Discord. Uh, it's a little bit of a mess in terms of chat always going by. There's always people looking for groups, uh, doing asking for price checks. You can find all the resources you need there, people willing to help out, help you kill your ancients or whatever you need to there, uh, just for progressing wise. Or maybe you can find a bail game if you can't find one or you know, things like that. The third best resource I'd say is the Project Diablo 2 website, They're the actual website itself. It doesn't have a lot of direct information on it, but from there you can find Twitch streams, you can find uh, trades, you can do your own price checks, or just kind of evaluate what your set's going to be or what your items are going to be in the, in, the lend, in the end. After that, I would say Twitch streams. Again, um, Twitch streams are, are big. Um, they're not as big as, say, like, you know Fortnite or something like that but the community the community is pretty solid uh so if you have a question a very specific question that you can't find googling definitely jump into anyone's twitch stream uh my my stream included and just ask the question uh streamers are, are happy to have you there and we'll be happy to answer any questions you might have if this video doesn't clear up a lot of that for you or if you just have very specific questions about your your character your build or whatever like that that's a great place um just a quick reminder uh, links to all the stuff will be in the description below, so definitely check that out. Section 2, we're going to talk about crafting. Now, crafting is a little bit better or more important, um, especially when you hit the end game and if you're looking for useful stuff. Uh, the reason I put this in here instead of after farming spots or gearing or that kind of stuff is because crafting is something you can do as you progress through Nightmare. Um, it generally requires a perfect gem, so you'll, you'll need one of these perfect gems, and then you'll have a blue item. And the blue item, you, say, you see how it says right underneath craft, recipes, jewel, and then it says B, C, H, P, and S. Those are four different types of things that you can craft. You can craft blood, caster, hit power, or safety. And basically it just depends what kind of class you're playing uh, that you're going to be looking for. So if you're playing um, say Sorceress or Necromancer, you're most likely going to be going for Caster. If you're playing Barbarian or a Zeal Paladin, you're going to be going for Blood. Um, if you are struggling and you need some more damage reduction, you're going to go for Safety. And then uh, I'm not really the biggest fan of hit power, but if you are struggling to hit monsters and you need that attack rating boost, that's where uh, hit power is going to come into play for you and help you out a lot. It can be a little bit pricey because as you can see it does require say for blood for instance we need a perfect ruby 
we need a RAL and we need a Jewel and the item. So what you'll do is you'll throw it in here. So item, we'll just take a random Jewel here. We'll take a perfect Ruby and we will take a RAL rune uh, right here. And once you have all four of these in here, you just hit the craft button and it turns it orange. Um, every item does something a little bit differently. Like every blood item you craft will craft it slightly differently. So for the most part though, blood's gonna give you percent life stolen per hit, things like that. Um, the good thing too is that these can also give you plus to your skills. So you can have plus one all or plus one barbarian skills, plus two whatever. Uh, for sorceresses, it's really good to craft orbs because you can get up to plus three, plus four in your plus plus four to all skills as a sorceress, which is just insane. This one didn't really roll amazingly, but if I was just starting out and I didn't have a better helmet, I mean, fourteen percent deadly strike, three percent life steal. It's not it's not the worst case scenario, especially uh, you know, it, it definitely helps out a little bit. It's also good for gearing up your mercenaries if your mercenaries don't have anything and you don't have the uniques for it. So that's the big thing with crafting. Again, there's there's four types of crafting. Blood, hit power, uh, caster, and safety. Now, on top of crafting, there's something else you can also do that has a chance to affect the outcome of the gear. And that's where world stone shards come in. These will drop anytime, any place, uh, even from normal all the way up to T4 maps, uh, T4 dungeon maps. They can drop them there as well. And what world stone shards do is it corrupts an item. So I'm going to waste one here real quick and I'm going to show you. It has a chance to corrupt it, which gives it an extra modifier, just something extra or improves one of the other ones. Uh, in addition to that, it can also brick the item. Now what bricking means is it'll turn it into a yellow item and it'll basically be garbage. Um, so you just press it twice, and now you see how it says corrupted on the in the middle, and then at the very bottom, four life after each kill. So not only does this give, or not only does this give three percent life stolen per hit, it also increases our life after each kill as well. And you can corrupt. Uh, generally, you want to corrupt legendaries. Um, see how my maul is corrupted, my gloves are corrupted, um, my belt's corrupted. They just give extra stats. And when you corrupt an item, that's what really gives it the the money factor, you know, uh, makes it worth more valuable to other players. Um, if you roll something good, because you can get like plus one to all skills, plus 10% faster cast rate, plus enhanced hit recovery, um, you know, just all you can get anything pretty much. And that leads us into our next subject, which is trading. Uh, trading within the community has always been a, a a big hot spot for Diablo 2 especially. Uh, back in the back in the day it was D2 JSP. Project Diablo doesn't allow for D2 JSP. It's uh, considered illegal for this mod. Instead, they have their own crafting version or their own trading version on their website. And on top of that, they also have a trading section in Discord. So you can just post a list of things that you want to trade and people can message you with offers. It's pretty solid overall. Um, and it's a good place to kind of price check and things when it comes to trading not everything is worth is worth money or runes or whatever the primary resource you're going to be seeing is uh, high runes or HRs HRs are I think generally start around 20 so like uh, a goal would be a high rune and um or I think a limb does as well I'll have to double check that one um, and they all they're all assigned a value so, for instance, the bear rune is assigned to 3.5 because it's used the most out of all the high runes. It's very valuable to have one. Whereas a Zod, the rarest rune in the game, is only used in one item. So it's considered not as, not as valuable because it's only used for botted or breath of the dying. So that's something to keep in mind. Vexes are going to be the most common. Uh, a Vex rune, I don't have one on me. But the Vex rune is the most common rune that is traded. It's it's generally about mid-range. And there's a whole spreadsheet. I guess I shouldn't say whole spreadsheet. There's a spreadsheet with some columns and some lines that tell you the exact rating of how much, however, anything is worth. Uh, so, in, for instance, a Worldstone Shard, I think, is worth 0 0.01. Uh, a Vex rune is worth 0.5. Uh, Bear worth 3.5. And you'll see on the website... Um, 
looking for one HR. That just means one equivalent value of high runes. So two vexes or, you know, things along those lines. It's it's a little complicated. It's a little annoying. But um, once you kind of understand it and get through it, you'll you'll be there. You'll, you'll know what I mean. You'll know what I mean. Um, but you can pretty much trade anything you want on the website, which is nice. You could trade crafted gear. You could trade charms. You could trade amulets. You can trade anything. And it's pretty easy to find some good starting gear for some world stone shards. And just by leveling up and playing the game, you should have a world stone shard or two just getting through hell. Um, so yeah, it's definitely, definitely a really good place to start. For the next section, I've been talking a lot, I apologize. It's kind of a big, long run-on, but there's going to be timestamps and everything. So whatever. Uh, for the next section, farming spots. Now, you, you've traded a little bit. You Maybe you crafted some gear. You know, you're like, all right, I can kill some level 85s. I, got, or I, can, I can start farming some gear. I can go to hell and, you know, do some work. But where do I go? Um, this is a hard one to answer because really it's dependent on your character. Um, and what I mean by that is for hell farming, it's very dependent on your character and what type of elemental damage you do because immunities are a huge pain. Um, especially for like, you know, even like sorceresses, um, there are certain areas that they just don't farm in the game because if you're using frozen orb and everything's immune to cold, you're not going to kill anything. So there's a lot of different places and it does depend on your character. Thankfully, there is a sheet on the wiki that tells you all the areas. What level? They're all level 85, which is the best. You wanna you wanna be farming level 85 if you can kill it. Um, and it tells you how many types of immunities there's gonna be. And generally, you'll find one that has zero immunities, or maybe just one one type of immunity to your element. And then your uh, your mercenary takes care of that. So some good places to farm are if you're not ready for hell yet you can do boss rushes which is like Indarial for uh stone of jordan and some some other kind of good loot you can do uh Traven crawl you can do um mephisto you can do diablo you can do eldritch uh, a lot of people don't know this but eldritch is a rare monster so that's an act five you go to the frigid highlands and you run straight up this guy will always be here, Eldritch the Rectifier. And you just kill this pack of monsters. And then you just go down, and you're like, okay, you didn't drop anything. So you'll walk over here and you'll kill Shank too. Because one, it's really good experience, uh, depending on your level. And two, they're both boss monsters, which means they have a pretty good chance of dropping something. Uh, we didn't get anything too crazy, but we did get, you know, and that's going to happen a lot, but that's why they're just super quick. You just knock them out. Uh, generally, they're pretty easy to take care of. Um, but you'll do that in Nightmare because that way he's not immune to cold damage. And then you can even do Bale if you'd really like to. It, it's a lot slower. I don't really recommend Bale. I recommend just you go to Catacombs 2, take an Undarial. You go to Durance of Hate, you take on Mephisto. You go to River of Flame, Chaos Sanctuary. Do Diablo, knock out Eldritch, new game. And uh, depending on your build, what class you're running as, it could take you anywhere from like five minutes to, you know, 10 minutes, depending on, like I said, what class you're running. So if you're a sorceress, you could just TP through it all and clean it up in a few minutes max. Now, if you're like, okay, I, I can definitely handle Nightmare. That's not a problem. I'm, I'm running through hell. I'm killing monsters. What do I do? What do I do in hell now? So the first things first, uh, there is the pit, which is just a simple, very easy to get to place. You'll go to the outer cloister in Act One. You'll run out of the uh, out of the cloister, run going backwards. Oops. And you'll just head straight down. You'll follow the path. Now, by following the path, it'll take you to a place called the pit. There's a couple uh, rare monsters you can stop and kill champions and stuff for more experience. Um, but generally, following the road will always lead you to the pit. This is a level 85 area, and what that means is it's the highest level in the game. It has a chance to drop any item in the game. It has the best experience in the game. So what you're going to do is you're just going to run through. You're just going to kill the monsters, clear it out, loot the chest at the end, and then make a new game or go do something else. 
It's like a large charm right there. And this charm could even roll like, like I said, anything. That could be like a, I don't know, like a 30 life, whatever. And the pit's a really good place. Um, the next best place after the pit is, well, there's a couple. Uh, there's Eldritch Shank again. So again, Frigid Highlands, Eldritch Shank, go up and down. There is also, let's see, oh, I'm just double checking. I know in, I think Ancient's Way has no cold immunity. So if you're a, uh, or maybe it's not Ancient's Way, maybe it's the other one. Sorry. Uh, might be Crystalline Passage. Doesn't have cold immunities. Yeah, they're all fire immune. So if you're, well, all right, I lied. There is a cold immunity. There's a whole list. <laughs> Sorry, I don't play Sorceress. Uh, there's a whole list available on the website that will be linked in the description below that you can definitely check out anytime you'd like. And um, it'll tell you everything. Everything there is in terms of what areas are level 85, what monsters are immune to, and things like that. And the next best place once you have good gear is maps. Now, maps are the go-to in-game content for... Um, Project Diablo. And if you've never played Path of Exile, a map is basically a dungeon. It's just a special dungeon that you can get to drop. I think they drop in Nightmare and Hell, but their highest drop rate is inside other maps, of course, because why wouldn't they be? <laughs> but what maps are is they open up to... I, I will actually blow this map really quickly because I have a couple of them. So in Hell Mode uh on in act five you can open a, a map and what this map does is it's a, it's a dungeon and in the dungeon are harder monsters so you'll see that this is item level 89 uh i think it goes up to 91 technically 99 but that's we'll talk about that in a minute but they go up to like 91 generally and it's tier one tier two and tier three Tier 1s are going to be the easier ones. Tier 2 is going to be a little bit harder. You may want some friends, like one or two people with you. And then Tier 3, I would recommend having a solid group of, of anywhere from 3 to three to 8 if you have a group of good players that you can run around with. Um, at level 90, I think I was averaging, uh, I want to say, 30,000 experience per second uh, while running Tier 3 maps. So they're pretty solid. Let's go ahead and pop this. And this is a tier two map and it just opens a portal. You go through it and you try to kill monsters. That's what it is. Uh, and then at the end of this, there is a boss that you can kind of fight or in the middle of it. It just kind of depends on the map. Every map is different. Um, or they have different types of maps, I should say. So not everyone's different. But for instance, this Tor Torian jungle is the same as the one we just opened up. Um, but Blood Moon is all cows. Ariat Battlefield is <laughs> Act 5 Battlefield. Throne of Insanity is my favorite. Again, that's a Tier 3 map, though, so be careful. And um, you also notice that these have magical affixes to them as well. You can upgrade these maps through gems. There's white, blue, and yellow, just like regular. Like regular items, I should say. And they have different modifiers. So this map gives me 8% more experience and there's 92% more monsters on the map. And they include faster hit recovery and fire skill damage. But if we go to something crazy like uh, like this tier 3 one, 34% experience, 107% density, 155% magic find. But look at all the modifiers the monsters have. They go up exponentially and it gets harder and harder and harder. Um... I did mention previously, there is a tier 4 map. It's called a uh, Haradrim Scarab Dungeon. And the Scarab Dungeon turns any map into a, or a tier 3 map into a tier 4 map. The tier 4 map becomes level 99. It is insanely difficult. It can have up to, I want to say, 100% increased experience, 300% uh, increased density. It can have some insane numbers. Um, so we can actually throw it on one really quickly and just see how it goes. So let's do, um, I don't want to use one of my amazing maps though, but, uh, we'll do it on this, on the blood moon map. Is that blood, river of blood? I mean, see, so here you go. Cathedral of light map, 65% experience, uh, 158% density. 
We have so many negative modifiers, it's not even funny. The monsters regenerate 2,300 life a second. They have more max life, poison skill damage. It has, it has hell cows on it. They do extra damage. They can't be frozen. So it gets very difficult. But the rewards are also there. Uh, generally, what people have told me too is the people who have done a lot of these, they say they're generally not worth it. So in the end, Cathedral of Light maybe, or Tier 4 in general, not not the best. But if you want a hardcore challenge for the end game, this is this is your goal with some with a group of good players. Another very good in-game thing is Ubers and D Clone. Now, if you have played the original Diablo 2, Lord of Destruction, you know what Ubers are. Uh, you've probably participated in Ubers. Uh, you got the charms, that all that good stuff. Maybe you've been around for Diablo Clone and you've been in that event or you've seen that event happen. D Clone is a little bit different in Project Diablo 2. D clone is actually something that you force spawn um, by harvesting organs and and making it uh, or harvesting specific resources from the uber bosses uh, Bale, excuse me, Mephisto and Diablo, and then you open a it's, you don't even open a portal you just teleport to him and you fight him. I don't have that on me unfortunately. Uh, to show you guys what Uber Diablo is like, or D yeah, Uber Diablo is like, it is insane. Uh, it is probably the hardest, hardest D clones probably ever been. Um, I think he has like 1.2 million HP. Uh, he one shots you unless you have like increased max fire resist, increased max lightning resist, and then you have like fire absorb, lightning absorb are the recommended. If you're melee, you're basically dead anyway, so good luck. Um, but he does have a chance to drop the best the best stuff. And he also has a chance to drop the the only unique legendary charm, which is the Annihilus charm, which is very solid. The regular dupers just give you a, a torch, which is also an incredible charm. The best grand charm. So you can take up, up to three slots with an Annihilus and a torch. Uh, I have yet to do those yet. On um, I've yet to get a Barbarian torch. And I've yet to kill D-Clone. <laughs> And I'm currently a level 90 barbarian. So, but yeah, I hope this kind of long winded video explanation of Project Diablo 2's in game kind of helps you out a little bit there. Um, hopefully, it gives you some good ideas. And I hope the resources down below also help you out in the, in the long term. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, definitely leave them in the comment section below and I'll get to you. If you want to catch me live, I live stream Thursday through Monday from. Uh, I haven't really, I don't really have a set schedule there. It's usually around like 6, 6 p.m. PST to like 2 a.m. PST. <laughs> it's a really weird schedule, but definitely. And then, yeah, link will be in the description below. But like I said, I hope this very long winded 23 minute video helps you out in some way. And I hope I, uh, the links help you. Thanks. Bye.